Welcome to Truck Talk. I'm Tyler Christensen, and I'll be conducting this interview on behalf of MCIEF organization. Today, I want to welcome Brenda Weiser with Reliance Partners. Brenda is a 30-year veteran of the insurance industry, currently serving as the Chief Marketing Officer with Reliance Partners. Brenda has been a part of the MCIEF organization for several years and was named to the Board of Directors for our team in 2019. So today, I want to welcome Brenda. Hey, thank you, Tyler. I really appreciate it. And thanks for our NCIEF crowd out there. So looking forward to uh, to getting grilled by Tyler and see what we can come up with on the truck front. So absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit about Reliance. Like I said, you've been with them since what, January of 2020 at this point. That is exactly right. So again, I'm a, a 30 plus year veteran. I'm not going to add the plus sign to it. You know how many more years that is. Uh, but uh, a truck insurance professional for a long time, uh, have been with Reliance Partners for a couple of years now. And again, you know, we are 100% transportation, uh, fastest growing retail agency in the United States. And again, we concentrate on trucks. It's wheels, wheels, and more wheels with us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I know your team is extremely nimble. Um, what's uh, what's keeping you and your team up at night when it comes to the trucking inter insurance industry right now and the forever evolving um, coverages, changes, things we're seeing in some of the most recent verdicts? Well, I tell you, when I think about that question, I still go back to the basics. You know, we can worry about all these crazy things that are going on in the world and but at the end of the day with a trucker, there are three things that are ultra important to them. Number one is a certificate. Number two is an auto ID card. And number three is a filing. And the reason those things are so important is because that's money. If a trucker can't get a load, he gets no money. He doesn't get a load if one of those three things don't work. So it's making sure that we dot every I and cross every T so that when that customer says, go, I want the insurance. We are ready to roll and we're ready to help him roll. So those are the types of things I worry about. It's the details. Yeah, it, it, it is about the details. And, um, you know, as we start seeing more and more talk and discussion around autonomous vehicles, do you see those three requirements changing when we think of manned trucks versus autonomous vehicles? Well, I think that's a great question. I think the industry doesn't really know what's going to happen, you know, as we move into this autonomous phase. But again, think about 50 years ago, you know, how did we deliver things? It was on railroad. Okay, everybody lived by the railroad. What's this truck going to help us with? And now look how, you know, things have flipped. The railroad and the truck have learned how to work together. They both, you know, provide a tremendous service you know, everywhere on earth. So I kind of look at the autonomous and the manned vehicles sort of in the same way. I don't think one is going to overtake the other. I think there's going to be room for both. But yeah, at the same time, I mean, that vehicle, when it's on the road, it still has to be legal. You know, a, a term that Tommy likes to use, make them legal, you know. So, right. so that truck is still going to need a filing. You know, I don't care who's driving it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, you know, as we we think about autonomous vehicles and the way cha claims are going to change, potentially how coverages are going to change, let's move to what's one of the craziest claims that you've ever seen? <laughs> oh, boy. I would say the one that I remember the most. I'm going to go with that one. So, and this is how old I am. This claim happened before cell phones. Okay, so just so everybody's clear. Um, I had gone out for my morning jog, got back to my driveway, and of course, my newspaper, my daily newspaper, because that's how you got the news back then, you right. know, is, is laying in the driveway. I open it up, and there's a picture of a big fireball on the front page, and there's a name of a chemical company underneath it. And I said, oh, my goodness, you know, because I know that I have a customer that delivers to this chemical company. So I run inside. I make a few phone calls and find out, yes, indeed, this was my customer that had delivered. Something happened with the fuel line. There was a leak on the property. I don't know where the, the leak went. It, it went into like a chemical pond. The whole thing ended up going up in flames. Uh, we only damaged a portion of the building. The truck was totaled. Thankfully, no one was injured. I mean, truly, unbelievably. But 
I have to tell you, I think that was my first foray into, oh my gosh, make sure you have the right coverages for your customer. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I know that uh, when you when you see those type of losses out there, you see the news. That's some, one of the first things I do is it's like, is it one of ours? You know, whose is it? Who's the carrier exactly. on this account? Exactly. Um, you know, that's the first point point that you go to. Um, I know you probably have known Tommy for a long time, and, and this is one of the most fun questions that we ask, but in two sentences, how would you describe Tommy? Hmm. I would say that Tommy is one of the most passionate educators that I know. And what I mean by that is he wants you to do it the right way, and he doesn't just talk about it, okay? He talks it walks it, lives it, breathes it every day. So when describing Tommy, I would say this about him. He has probably touched more lives in the truck insurance world than any number of organizations combined. And I truly do mean that. Um, and there are very few people you can say that about, but I think if we all strived to learn the way that he educates us to learn, um, we'd all be much better professionals for it, for sure. So, yeah, he's uh, he's built quite the organization. You know, we continue to try and market and get this out more broadly. Um, how are you doing that internally at Reliance Partners and and even outside of your own organization? How are you trying to foster the MCIF organization and bring more newer, younger generations into our organization? Great question. So, you know, one thing I always do is uh, certainly I I'm very fortunate. I have access to a lot of insurance markets. And definitely when I meet someone new, which which doesn't happen that often, I, I know so many people in the industry, but I eventually make it around to the question of, hey, you know, I, I don't see your organization with MCIEF, you know, uh, do you know about it and, you know, how it can help you? So I do a lot of what I would call grassroots, um, just making sure that the people that I'm dealing with on a daily basis are also passionate about being educated and being the best at their craft. And that includes my underwriters and my claims people, but also our internal organization. Um, definitely, we do a lot of training with MCIEF. Uh, we use all of the resources that are available to us, uh, which are plenty. And, you know, again, we hire a lot of new people. Uh, you know, a lot of organizations, when they hire, they might hi hire experienced insurance people. You know, sometimes we find it's, um, you know, also good to hire inexperienced people and train them the way you want. So MCIF is a huge help for us with that. Yeah, I think just the limited time that I've had with uh, MCIF, just the socialization around the TRS designation and getting it out there and people understanding what goes into it, uh, the knowledge behind those um, folks that have that designation is, is really important because it's not a CPCU, it's not a CIC, something that's broadly known. Um, but I know that the, like I said, it's being socialized, it's evolving. Um, we have a lot of resources now such as truck stop that we can reach out and get to those people in a virtual environment so i just want to call that out for the viewers today if you do not have your trs designation you're interested there'll be links below in this video to access our organization access the resources that we have available to you as a viewer so that you can become a trs designee as well and you know one thing i'd add to that tyler is that I, you know i do a lot of interviewing and i have to tell you when I see a TRS on a resume, that person goes to the top of my stack, you know, That's so it's out. something to think about. It's <laughs> a good call out. All right. So, you know, 30 plus years in the industry, um, what's something that you wish you would have known five years ago about our industry or potentially the changes that would be faced um, over the last five years, maybe even the pieces that have come up with COVID? So... Certainly never predicted a COVID uh, pandemic, you know, always hear about pandemic, but, you know, never think, hey, that couldn't affect me, you know. Um, but I, I think from five years ago, the one thing that really pops out in my mind is cyber. So, you know, it was just, 
you know, I'm generalizing, but it, it was like a boutique coverage, you yeah. know, it was nice to have, didn't need to have type of thing, you know, and, you know, fast forward five years and you look at how difficult it is in some cases to even, you know, obtain the coverage. Yeah. So, or certainly to obtain high limits for it. And uh, truly, truly that I, I think stands out. I think another item that stands out just more on the trucking side of things and how it affects insurance is the driver shortage. And I, the only reason I bring that up is because ever since I've been in trucking, we've had a driver shortage. I mean, this is, this is, this did not happen five years ago, you know, and two years ago, this has been going on for a long, long time. But I think it's, it's interesting now how the underwriting is so affected by the driver shortage. And you know, you see these pressures on the underwriters now to maybe take some drivers that don't quite have the experience that their models show they need, but they also realize that, hey, to write some of these accounts, you know, we're going to have to work with these truckers. So it's like the insurance industry is trying to help, you know, that uh, trucking industry issue. And I don't, you don't see that happening very often in other industries where the insurance side and the, you know, the industry side come together. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, the driver shortage is, is probably one of the biggest problems that we're experiencing in our industry as a whole. What do you think the root cause of that is? <laughs> well, three years ago, if I wanted to uh, go buy something, I got my car and I rode to the mall and I got it. Today, I can lay in bed, I can order all my groceries, I can order anything on earth I want. If I need a battery for my watch, I can order it and it's gonna be here tomorrow. So I would say, uh, you know, it's seriously a law, it's the law of supply and demand, you know. The demand is so high to have goods now. We are a now society. <laughs> we don't wait. We are not patient. And it's we are just struggling to keep up. You know, we don't have a vehicle shortage. So that tells me that, that the manufacturing side was able to stay up. Right. So now it's trying to determine, you know, how do we get, uh, you know, bodies in seats um, you know, to make that happen. Does that need to be higher pay? I don't know. I, you know, think of all the times maybe that you were excited about getting a raise or you changed jobs for a little more money. Did that wear off after a little while? Probably. So sure. I don't know that, you know, money is necessarily going to be the thing that's going to save it. So I think there's, you know, definitely going to be a combination of factors. But I do think we need as much input from the drivers as we can get, because I think really they're the ones that are going to provide the solution to us. Yeah. And, you know, as you, you brought up the underwriting earlier, and, and certainly from a company perspective, you, we do put a lot of weight on, you know, sen seniority and tenor. And as we continue to tailor our underwriting approaches as we continue to become more sophisticated from an advanced analytics perspective we're having to really lean in heavily to the data um, to underwrite that differently because the length of employment is becoming less and less you're seeing drivers jump around you know quite often um, the tenor is less and less so i think that the driver shortage is requiring all aspects of our industry to think differently and put ourselves in a position that, as you mentioned, we can still write accounts, we can still provide the services and coverages that are necessary, but of course, um, from a company perspective, continuing to remain profitable as we experience some of those new risks. Exactly. Well, you know, it's funny, driver turnover, uh, you know, five years ago, if I had a driver turnover in a certain percentage or higher, that account would have been declined just yeah. outright. Well, now an underwriter realizes, you know, I can't, I can't just decline every account that comes to my desk, you know, so, right. so, I, you know, I love that on the underwriting side, we're starting to evolve and I, and you brought up the word analytics and, you know, it's just so key uh, that, you know, in the, well, currently and in the past, in our most recent past, you know, we really always look backward to figure out what's going to happen forward. Right. But with the analytics that are available, we can look at what's happening now and determine, make an educated guess as to what's going to happen yeah. going forward. So I, I do love how that all is evolving. I think that's going to be a big help to us, the industry as a whole. 
Sure. From a from a retailer perspective, how have you seen or what benefits, I guess, should have you seen on your accounts that are carrying telematics these days? You know, now that we can obtain that live data, um, you know, help coach our, our accounts. What benefits are you as an agency receiving from your accounts holding telematics and having those sophisticated systems on their units? Another great question. And for every trucker that's listening out there. Um, and every insurance agent. <laughs> so five or six years ago, if I had an account and they had telematics, I didn't even have to say who the telematic provider was. I could just check a box that said telematics. Guess what happened to that account? Went right to the top of the stack. The underwriter was like, this is great. They're investing in technology. This is wonderful. Today, that same question, you know what that gets me? Nothing. You know what? You might look at that account now just because they have telematics but it's just going in the stack. So I think one of the most important things, definitely from our retail agency side, is that it's really important for us to stay up with technology and what's happening. Two or three years ago, to ask a customer to put a camera in a vehicle, that almost was unheard of. I'm not saying companies didn't do it, but it was hard to tell a customer, hey, this insurance company isn't even gonna offer you a quote if you don't have a camera in. Today, that is a common statement. So for me, it's really all about staying up with technology and making sure that we're keeping our customers up with what technology is out there. Because at the end of the day, if they're not utilizing uh, the resources that are out there, then th that is opportunity cost to them because they are just gonna have less markets that are gonna wanna talk to them, look at them, and guess what happens when you're, you know, the, the fewer markets you have, the higher your premiums are going to be. It's just a total fact of supply and demand. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, a huge tool of protection. Um, you know, the accounts that we have that or that we insure that carry cameras, the efficiency within the claims process is huge. Uh, we can tell so much by just watching a short video. Um, it allows us to be there for our, our insured. It allows us to protect that insured. Um, and, you know, there are times that losses are at fault and being able to close those claims, pay out what's what's deemed necessary and move on helps. You know, we've saved drastically on expense costs by being able to watch those videos. Um, and then, of course, we've been able to defend. So we, of course, continue to promote um, cameras forward and driver facing and uh, we have great partners out there and that, that are part of MCIF that for those accounts out there that would be interested in looking at some of this new technology, um, I'm sure they're willing to answer your call and help. <laughs> Absolutely. So, <laughs> you know, I want to focus this last little bit about MCIF a little bit more and talk about, you know, those benefits that are out there. We talked about some of the resources that are available to receive your TRS, um, but you know, talking about you being on the board, talking about the time that you were on the committees, what's some of the biggest benefits that you've received from being a part of MCIF personally and for your organization? Well, personally, I can definitely stand before you and say, I'm not here without MCIF. So, you know, when I, uh, you know, I met Tommy, you know, long before MCIF existed, obviously he was an educator and, you know, for, for different outlets. And, you know, when he developed MCIF, it was the first time that I had one place I could go to get answers to my questions. You know, always in my career, I've always been the one people relied on to, to answer questions, but, you know, I don't know everything, just, you know, you don't know everything. All of us don't know everything. You need places to get your resources from. And it was the first time that I didn't have to pick up the phone and call 10 underwriters and ask the same question and then decide which one I liked the answer to and determine that's what the answer was. You yeah. know, I could actually, uh, you know, call Tommy. Uh, and to this day, you can pick up the phone and call Tommy. Um, you can ask Tommy on the website. If you don't want to call him, you can email a question in. Not only is Tommy going to explain to you how that coverage works, he's going to show you where it's at in the policy. And when I say show you, he's going to show you, he's going to tell you the page, the paragraph, the sentence. And guess what, folks? He ain't looking it up. 
It's just all right here. He knows exactly where it is. It's all in his head. <laughs> and, you know, further, you're going to learn how that insurance piece coordinates with that trucker's operations. Again, how many other insurance professionals have to be so intertwined with what's happening in their insured's industry? And so what MCIF has done, you know, one, definitely one of the biggest takeaways for me is it's taught me so much on the trucking operations side, understanding the seat of my trucker uh, and making sure that I'm, you know, evaluating exposures correctly. But with regard to my organization, uh, MCIF helps us in multiple ways. Number one, like you said, we have a TRS designation through MCIF, which is called Transportation Risk Specialist. You know, I love people that want to be great at their craft. That doesn't always mean you're going to have a designation, but for those people that want to get one, this designation is totally focused on transportation insurance and transportation operations. It is unlike anything you've ever been through. You definitely will have some coverage study, but guess what? A good bit of this course really has to do with what's going on with the trucker's operations and how the policies that you sell them fit into those operations, which is just key. There is no organization out there teaching people this kind of information. Um, the other item I'd love to hit on about MCIEF is the CE. So there's continuing education available for members. And that's where I think some of the difference is. Folks that want to be great at their craft, you're not searching online for CE. You're going somewhere right. that's going to help you with your craft. So that's certainly something I like about uh, MCIF for both me and the organization. And probably the last thing, and you had brought it up earlier, was is the truck stops. So again, these are monthly current events with uh, industry professionals, it could be insurance, could be trucking, could be vendors. And it's really a conversation about what is happening in, you know, the insurance and trucking space. So those are, you know, just a few of the items that, you know, have really, you know, kept me in tune with MCIF. Yeah, we we greatly enjoy the truck stops. You know, unfortunately, in the day to day, oftentimes you're buried and you're looking at what's in front of you. And um, you know, to, if you're an underwriter, maybe you're territorial or you're geographically you're working on the West Coast. You don't handle East Coast business. Uh, even from a producer perspective, you're only focused on accounts in this part of the nation. And those truck stops are provide a great holistic view of what's happening. Um, how we're evolving the challenges that we're facing. And we get a lot of different perspectives um, from a company perspective. I love when we can bring our legal folks in um, and they can put things in plain language for us, um, talk about what they're experiencing, how they're working through it. Um, even, even going back to our annual conference that we just hosted in Orlando in October, the, the classes that are put on there and the facilitators that come to the table are, are from various domains and it just really has something for everybody. You know, it's that common area that we can bring um, the legal teams together, our insureds, trucking accounts, retail agents, wholesalers, companies, and it doesn't matter where you're from. Um, you, everybody comes together. Um, you create a network and friendships with your competitors right down the street. Um, but it just is a great place for you to sit around the table, learn new information, and be able to throw your perspectives at others and allow them to respond so that when we walk away from that conference, we can go back and be better individuals in whatever domain we may be in to further drive the trucking insurance industry and make it better. Absolutely. I, you know, I always love to say that MCIEF is the who's who of transportation insurance. And I can remember the first conference many moons ago, and it was in one room in, in the same Hyatt in the, you know, in, in the Orlando airport, but it was in one room and we weren't stuffed in there. Okay. So we, we had plenty of room and now I, I'm amazed every year and how it grows and grows. And now we have a ballroom full of people. We have 10 breakout rooms and you know, the the speakers that come and offer their time to help us learn and be better, it's just one of a kind. You just don't experience it anywhere else. 
Well, uh, we can contribute that to, to many individuals, much like yourself. You've, you've given a lot to the organization, um, a lot of time. For, for those viewers out there that may be interested in learning more about MCIEF, um, even further from what we've discussed today, um, what pieces of advice would you give them as a takeaway, um, how to get involved, who to contact, et cetera? Absolutely. So I would start at the website. So uh, mcief.org, come visit us, give us a test ride, look around, see what's there, see how that can help your organization. From there, uh, you know, definitely joining is the way to go. And I, you know, I say that because this is where everything, you know, all your resources are at. And, you know, you're, you have uh, discounted classes, Again, you can get a designation. You can meet on the you know monthly truck stops, you know for current uh, current events. You have access to Tommy and being able to ask questions about what's going on. How can you know? Can you help me with this claim question I have? Can you help me with any question I have? And again, this is just not something that's normally available to folks in an organization. So I would, you know, definitely encourage to start with the website, um, get on board and come to a class soon. I think that's where you'll, you'll really start to, uh, you know, enjoy the benefits. Absolutely. Well, hey, thank you. I want to thank Brenda, Chief Marketing, Marketing Officer for Reliance Partners. Of course, you can see marketing's in her blood. She was able to give you a lot of great information today about not only Reliance Partners, but MCIF. We really hope that if you're not a member that you follow her advice, click on our website, it'll be posted below. We appreciate you being with us today and we hope to see you soon. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you.